Alright guys, so unfortunately this video is going to be a little hard to follow along with. It's going to be a little hard to keep track of. Things are going to be really sporadic. And uh, there's going to be some big gaps in between stages. And the reason why there's going to be a big gap between stages is I had to stop what I was doing in the middle of doing it, just drop everything and hit the road. Unfortunately, this past 4th of July weekend, um, my mother passed away. So, of course, you know, every, nothing else in my life mattered at that point. Uh, not to say you guys don't matter to me, but um, I, I had some things I had to take care of. So I had to go back home to Tennessee, uh, make the arrangements for my mother's funeral, get everything together, and um, of course, we had to, had to lay her to rest. I'm back in the garage now, as you can see. It's about two weeks later. And um, we're gonna try to keep pushing things on. Um, if I don't seem like my normal self, you guys can understand why. If you ever lost a parent, um, you know how hard that can be. I've actually lost both of my parents now. But all we can do is keep trying, to keep moving forward, um, and just keep continuing to live our lives day to day. So that's what I'm gonna try to do as best I can at least. So. I got some things done off camera once I came back, uh, but yeah, this is going to be pretty sporadic. You're going to see a lot of jump cuts and essentially huge weeks of work done in between things. Hopefully soon we'll be back on this, our normal schedule and things will get back to being. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now, I know it's been a while since the last time we uploaded, but today we're back on the 2JZ. Now, when we finished up the last video with the 2JZ, we had just gotten to a complete short block. Well, as you can see, a lot of stuff has been done. Uh, first things, we got the head back on. We got our uh, Brian Crower 272 cams put back in there. Cam gear and stuff was all powder coated. Turbo was powder coated. Uh, shout out to Coop's Coating. Um, we did powder coat the uh, fuel rail as well. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of an issue with the uh, fuel rail and getting stripped out. Didn't take my word for it. Basically, the threads on this side got stripped out, so we can't use it. So, Real Street Performance uh, got an order in for me really quick with a fuel injector clinic fuel rail. We got a radium engineering uh, direct mount fuel pressure regulator. Want to run the gauge, manual gauge, or analog gauge on this side, sensor on the back side. And it'll feed down. Injectors back in, bring it back to the front. Um, now, inside the engine, not much has changed. All the same components, aside from we did put new connecting rod bearings in there. Um, so, as you saw in the previous video, rod bearings were the one thing that I never could really get going, and that was because the uh, the rod caps were switched on two of the rods. Um, it is very, very important to get rod caps matched up with the specific rod they're meant for, especially on factory rods. And the symbol on the two JZ rods are in Japanese. And it was some weird, I think subtle, subtle difference between the two that I just never caught on. Um, and if I'm being honest, I didn't really know to look back then. But anyway, new rod bearings are in there. So that's really the only change to the uh the bottom end top end stayed exactly the same like i said 272 cams uh brian crower springs retainers all that stuff uh same arp head studs main studs rod bolts uh, one of the clear changes we made was adding in our uh, ati super damper again real street performance came through with that so yeah, that takes a very specific tool to install and it's not a cheap tool. And I was kind of upset I had to buy that. Uh, accessory drives back on. We haven't thrown the new belt on yet just because I want to make sure that that tick that was happening uh, that caused me to tear this engine apart again is completely gone. And um, I'm gonna eliminate as many variables. So I'm gonna run it without the accessory drive. And if there's no tick, then I'll throw the belt on so we can run the accessory drive as well. And if the tick comes back, then we know that the issue is somewhere in the accessory drive and not in the engine. Another big change is we changed our turbo manifold, which uh, required me to also change 
the wastegate. So he went from a 38 mil wastegate to a 44 mil wastegate. And then of course the powder coating on the turbo, still the same turbo. Uh, we're just going to kill that one before I buy a new one. All right, yeah, so that's it for the 2JZ update. Uh, so now we're going to get done with the engine and just get it all prepped to get back in the car. So we got to take it off of the stand. We're going to get it on its dolly so I can throw all the trans adapter stuff on there, uh, the PMC kit from Drift HQ. And then uh, we'll throw the trans on there and just shoehorn this thing back in the BMW. So. All right, guys, so we got the engine down off of the stand. It's on the wooden dollies now. We got the PMC adapter put in place, kind of. I've got to torque these down, and then I've got to find my two bolts right down here. These two lower bolts are different from the other five, but uh, I'm just gonna hop on uh, the internet. I should probably hop on Facebook and uh, reach out to Duarte and see if he can't hook me up with these last two bolts. Uh, it's Duarte from Drift HQ. Those guys have been great to work with. They've always come through clutch when I needed something for this PMC kit. And I believe they are the only U.S. retailers of the PMC kit. So, if you're doing a swap like this, make sure you hit them up. So, we got to use this uh, thick spacer with it, with the PMC kit. And then you're going to put your flex plate on there as well. The flex plate has to come from an auto car. Let's get that. And then from there... You can use the custom billet flywheel that comes as part of the kit. And this was going to be a bit of a pain just because it's a little corroded. Now, I'm pretty sure PMC services these kits. So if I really needed to, I could get a new kit or have this one resurfaced or something. And again, you can find all of this install sheets and torque specs and everything for this on PMC's website, but also on Drift HQ's website. And now, of course, i got to go through it and actually torque these down to the proper torque spec. But first, like always, i got to go figure out what those torque specs are. So, yeah, we'll be back once we find out what those torque specs are. All right, so we're back. Now we're going to torque the outer one. Um, hit it with 60 foot-pounds just because that's what the updated data says. That takes care of that. Alright, so full disclosure, um, I haven't looked in a while for a trans adapter kit because I already have a trans adapter kit from PMC and it's worked out great. But apparently, um, I found out while I was checking for the torque specs on this, I went on Drift HQ's website just to see uh, what their instruction manual said and they offer these same adapter kits um, they've updated them so now you have a selection of different clutches that go with it depending on what your power level is going to be um, how much torque it needs to handle and they've also updated it looks like uh, the hardware that goes with it and um, uh, some of the other components to go with it so if you're just now starting out one of the two JZ swaps and you haven't figured out your transmission adapter solution, definitely check out Drift HQ and their PMC kit. They've got them for right around 600 foot pounds of torque, um, I think 700 foot pounds of torque, and then around 900 foot pounds of torque um, as far as their clutches and what's, what's available with them. And they come as part of the kit. So. Great for you guys who are just starting. Shitty for me because now I gotta go buy a new clutch and stuff. But uh, then again, I always knew I was gonna have to buy a new clutch because I always knew that the one that I have wasn't gonna hold up to the ultimate power goal. But yeah, race car problems, right? All right, now before I said I was gonna call up, not call up, 
So before I said I was gonna hit up Duarte from Drift HQ to see about getting the two lower bolts that I lost. Probably still gonna do that, but um, I did manage to find some bolts laying around that are the same dimensions. So we're gonna drop these in here. I already got the first one in. All right, so I'm gonna grab a socket for that. Three foot pounds. Turn this on, let this calibrate. This digital wrench needs to be calibrated on a flat surface. are in. These I'm going to hit at 33 foot pounds as well. And hopefully the uh, flyboat doesn't move. Normally I would have put blue Loctite on those bolts um, or some type of thread locker. And in the past, that's what I've done. But now, I honestly just don't even care anymore. The sooner this transmission breaks, the sooner I can get a DCT thrown in there and have an actual... I guess, the sooner I can start the next evolution of this project. Alright, now that i found my tool, the next thing we're going to do is get the clutch and pressure plate put on here. Uh, this is just a regular BMW clutch alignment tool. As you'll see, it fits right there into the pilot bearing for the uh, aftermarket flywheel. So, works just fine. Now we're going to take our pressure plate. What? So now we're going to take our clutch disc. And we're going to take the side that says, Gettiva side Which is German for gear side. I think. Just gonna grab that. Feed that on there. And that should go on there. Actual dowels. I already know this clutch probably isn't going to stand up for too long, but as long as we can get it at least dynoed and everything, get some street miles on it, burn this thing out, then we'll upgrade to something a little more appropriate. Grab 
my torque wrench. Probably uh, just tighten it down all the way first. Hopefully this thing doesn't rotate too much. Right away, we're seeing the issue with using these bolts over and over. adapter kit, flywheel, and the uh, clutch disc and pressure plate assembly uh, reinstalled. Next up, um, we're going to throw the 420G gearbox on there. So, I don't know. It's probably a problem for future me. So, alright, we'll check back in when that's done. Alright, well, we got the transmission and the, the adapter housing back on the engine. Uh, I know this is like a huge jump cut and we're getting way ahead of ourselves, but uh, you guys just saw the explanation why. Uh, don't pay any attention to that fuel rail. That's the old fuel rail that we can't use because of, yeah, the threads got destroyed. I still got our same vent valves, that new manifold. Uh, new wastegate that's the mbr not the mbs that we used to have that one's a 44 mil it's that mounts are down i gotta throw the oil filter uh, sandwich plate and everything on there but i gotta get the cooling lines on first ac is there just for the pulley we don't use ac and yeah, the new ATI damper is there. I gotta torque that still. All right, so that's everything. Now we're just gonna take this, pluck it out, throw it in the car, but I uh, gotta make some adjustments. So yeah, that's everything for that. Um, now we're gonna take this, pluck it, put it in the car, but I still gotta make a few adjustments on the car. My steering column isn't lined up the way it should be. It kind of got tossed around when I was moving that subframe in and out. And uh, side note, after moving that subframe in and out so many times now, I think I'm really getting to the point where it's almost time for a new chassis altogether. Things just don't bolt in as smoothly as I like them to anymore. So, I don't know, we'll send it to the brakes, I guess. All right, so as you guys can see, wheels are generally straight in line, but let's see if you can see it through the tent. But yeah, you can kind of see it. I know the windows are dirty. This car is not a street car at all. Windows super dirty, but you can see the steering wheel is at an angle instead of being straight across. I would just open the door, but yeah, no door handle. All right, there we, there we go. Now we can see what I'm talking about when I say the angle on the steering is off. So first wheel. Get that it's peeling and it's just been too hot. Unlock it. All right, now we'll go to the front of the car. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this uh, stud out right here. 
or this bolt, whatever. We're gonna pop it out. We're gonna pull this out. We're gonna rotate the steering shaft up until it's level again. Actually, what I might have done is I might end up popping this one out because if I rotate down here, it'll force us to change the alignment on the wheels. All right, so we got our E10 socket. So I ended up going with the top bolt instead. Again, because I didn't want to. Alright, got that out. with alignment. Then thread this back in. Yeah. And normally these bolts would go from the top down, but because the oil pan sits so low. Boom. All right, so like I was saying, normally these bolts would go from the top down, but since the oil pan and everything is fit so tight right there, it's easier for me to pump that steering rack out if I put the nut on the top side, that way I can just slip a box in wrench on there and drop it out to the bottom versus having to pull the engine out completely in order to bring that bolt in uh, to the top. Now we'll tighten those down with a, a wrench and socket and then I gotta work out some things with the fuel rails. It's yard work day, so. Anyway, hopefully you can hear me over the sound of the guys using the leaf blower in the background. But um, like I was saying, we'll tighten those up. Then I gotta do some reworking on the fuel lines. I'm switching from a dual feed to a single feed on the new fuel rail. And then uh, we'll see if we can get that direct mount regulator to work without having to remote mount the direct mount regulator. It's all gonna get changed up. Hopefully it doesn't change the location of my flex fuel sensor. Um, but if it does, I don't know, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it, I guess. All right, so next up, we're gonna start fixing these fuel lines a little bit. Now, I was running a dual feed. Now I was running a dual feed, but with a new fuel rail, I think I'm gonna run a single feed just to help with plumbing and free up some space because with that direct mount regulator, it's gonna be really tight back here along the firewall, uh, which is where this second feed was coming from. So I'm gonna get rid of that Y joint and I'm going to just put a coupler on there so we can just run just this one feed line. Fitting. 
Notice it's AN to AN and not AN to ORB or anything. I know that's not tight. What I'm gonna do is get them on there together first. There we go. So I did lose about two inches of length in the fuel line just by removing this Y connector. But that should be fine because uh, this line had a lot of slack in it, or I shouldn't say a lot, it did have some slack in it. And it was drooping a little bit down there. And I was a little concerned about it catching onto something anyway. So hopefully by getting rid of those two inches, or roughly two inches, I should uh, take up a lot of that slack that was there. And hopefully have a nice tucked look on that line and not have to worry about it dragging and catching something on the ground or just rubbing through. Now that's where I have a lot of slack. Every turn line has a ton of slack in it. So I'm going to work that, but I'll probably work that on the, the return line side. Anyway, so next up we're going to go and work on the engine side things real quick. We got the uh, oil filter, the oil filter sandwich plate, and the cooling lines that we have to throw back on there the oil cooling lines so we'll do that it's just easier to do that to get those oil cooler lines onto the sandwich plate while the sandwich plate is off of the engine block there's a ton more space to work with and you're not having to dig tightly into spaces with the wrench Alright, so here's the issue we're running into now. This mount keeps turning every time we drop this down in here. Um, you see there's the hole for the bolt to go through. So that hole should be in line with this hole. And it's not. As I can tell, but on this side, they're going to fall into place just fine. Um, so yeah, that's... The issue we got going on with that. So I'm gonna do now see if I can't unbolt this lower part of the mount and pull that up through the top. Uh, up through there, you can see where the, the mount kind of splits. So if I can pull it up to there, flip it around and drop it back in there and then bolt it up from the bottom again. Now, the issue with doing it that way is the control arm gets in the way of uh, giving us a straight shot up to where the nut is that holds that lower mount in place. So you kind of have to work weird angles to get to the nut itself. And it's really hard to torque on there. Um, but don't really have much of a choice. So we'll try that. All right, so next update, we did get the uh, mount lined up. I did exactly what I said I was gonna do. And I basically just dropped it in from the top side, just come in straight down into there in between the two rails. Yep, just dropped it in 
right through there. And now it's in its spot. So now we just gotta get the bolt through there and then we can rest the weight of the engine on it and get it off this crane, which is good because that weather's changing pretty quick and I wanna get done. So yeah, we're gonna work through that real quick and see what happens. Hopefully I can get this all put back together before the rain comes. Uh, if not, I'm kind of in that awkward spot where I guess I should be getting soaked because I can't leave this engine out and exposed in the water. So, all right. All right, now both bolts are in. Uh, see it down there as well, it's in. This new manifold leaves no space for clearance on that side. Like you can see, it's, you can't even get a feeler gauge through there, but it's in. So. Back off, we got our space on the firewall. I think there's gonna be enough room for that regulator to chop off those coolant lines. So yeah, I think that's gonna be enough space uh, the only thing left to do, like I said, is drop the coolant lines, uh, chop off the coolant lines, drop the fuel rail in, and see if it fits. Actually, we can check fuel rail lines right now, see if they fit. Let's see. What's that? this with that's going to that side and this will sit something like that oh hell yeah we the regulator up this way so that'll fit something like that and we won't even need to bam Yeah, that'll work out. Eventually we'll get this uh, fuel rail powder coated the same color as this. But again, that just had the, uh... let's see if it focuses. Yeah. It just got all stripped out. Uh, that was his first fuel rail powder coated, so learning process. But anyway, yeah, I think this is going to fit. Obviously it'll sit just a little bit lower once they're everything's in place um, looks like we will end up having to modify back here slightly yeah that's alright see so yeah, all in all I'm, I'm happy I'm excited about how this is gonna fit um, uh, one, I'm happy that this is just back in the car, finally. That's a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. So I guess all I'm gonna do now is just tighten up a few bolts, uh, the engine mount bolts where it mounts to the subframe. Then I'm gonna throw the, the trans cross member back in and they should all be sitting under its own weight by then. All right, so I'm gonna do that off camera. That's it for this video. Again, I apologize for how random and sporadic the things were and the big time gaps in between. But like I explained earlier, um, I did just lose my mother and I had to take time to handle that. And then I'm still working on, you know, kind of mentally getting through that process. So that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Later.